there's something special about the cherry bomb. A tiny fish painted in shades of red and gold. From the very first time I saw them, their colors and behavior fascinated me. Perhaps that's why I chose them for my behavior study during my first year at the university. Fish endemic to Sri Lanka and the overall population has become very low due to poaching and habitat loss. My journey began at Dehwala Zoological Gardens observing their captive cherry bar populations. They were vibrant and healthy, flashes of crimson darting through the tank. But to my surprise, they showed no schooling behavior at all. Soon after, my attention was drawn elsewhere. I joined friends on their own fieldwork, watching lesser whistling ducks behaviors and finding grey hornbills for my friends. Those days filled with laughter, discoveries and the calm rhythm of nature. Yet, deep inside, I still long to understand the cherry bar. One rainy afternoon after the university, my friend Nathan and I boarded a bus heading south. He told me about an old population of cherry bars near Akuras, a place he had seen years ago. The rain softened as we traveled. By the time we reached Akurasa, it was almost midnight. The next morning began with sweetness. Fresh rambutans picked straight from the garden and the steaming cup of tea overlooking the lush granary. Then we set off in search of their wild cousins. We traveled deep into the countryside where tea plantations rolled across the hills like waves of emerald. We stopped by a small hidden stream. Years ago, Netum had seen killifish here. And with a few gentle scoops, we found them again. The Ceylon killifish, Aplochelus dea, shimmering with iridescent hues. Their golden patches glinting beneath the water surface. A little further downstream, Beneath the shade of wild breadfruit trees, we found what we had come for, the cherry bulbs. They glowed like sparks of fire beneath the rippling light. The males shone a deep scarlet, while the females were glided in soft gold, the most beautiful I had ever seen. I took my observations carefully, then stepped into a stream to watch them closer. They were calm, curious, almost playful, and afraid of my presence. At one moment, I felt a gentle tickle at my fingers, a cherry bar nibbling curiously at my toes. Further upstream, we found other companions of these waters endemic snakehead, Channa orientalis, and the silvery Rasbora dandia. Each encounter added another story to the living world hidden behind these white waters. As the day ended, we picked more rambutans near the stream, watching the golden light fade behind the trees. The next morning, we explored one more stream, smaller, quieter, but still home to these tiny crimson wanderers. Even as I struggled with my field notebook, I couldn't help but smile. I had come searching for behavior, but what I found was connection. The next day, we left the village and headed back to Colombo. But in my heart, I was still there. In that quiet forest dream, among the glimmering scores of jay bulbs, 